Él es Mauricio Ramírez, un artista visual. Nació y creció en Berwyn, Illinois, pero pasaba mucho tiempo con el resto de su familia en Milwaukee, en el sur de la ciudad. Ever since I was little, I always idolized my older cousins that were into graffiti, into DJing, and you know, kind of into the whole like 1990, mid 90s, like skate rap culture. You know, I kind of idolized it, so I felt that their creativity really sparked my interest in the arts. When I was little, I always enjoyed seeing some of the great artists kind of having their images uh, move people and, and influence people as well as uh, uplift people. And, you know, I, I admired that. So I kind of wanted to participate in that and emulate that. The academic side of art never really uh, sparked my interest to, to learn more. And, and I know it's very, um, very ignorant to say, but, you know, I was at the time that I was interested in art, I was more interested in graffiti art and stuff that was uh, being existed and being painted around this, uh, cities across the world. Pero la formación académica de Mauricio fue en inglés y como docente, graduándose de la Universidad de Illinois en Springfield. I chose to be a mural artist because of the impact that it has on the population of people, how it has a direct impact. Mural uh, making is far more impactful than having a painting sit inside a gallery where it's only open from this hour to this hour and you have to wait two years to even show in the gallery. My entrepreneurial spirit brought me to figuring out how to get my artwork seen by people and stuff. So uh, mural making facilitated that for me. Mauricio se encontraba viviendo en la ciudad de Albuquerque cuando la ciudad de Milwaukee estaba buscando un artista para pintar las cajas de electricidad en la avenida Wisconsin en Milwaukee cuando una prima le envió todos los papeles. I looked it up and I just kind of, you know, read the guidelines and, you know, one of the things about that specific request is that it was a, they requested like a 20 to 30 page, you know, submission. They just weren't looking for, you know, images or a portfolio. They really wanted someone to kind of submit. I think at that point I was really well versed in how to submit to these gigs. And so um, I submitted and, you know, I told them my story about Milwaukee and, you know, I, we both agreed that it was going to be a good fit for the both of us. So the utility boxes represent Milwaukee's rich history and culture and commerce along Wisconsin Avenue. So the individuals that I decided to depict on the utility boxes, um, you know, range from anywhere from Solomon Juno, Byron Kilborn, who were their founding fathers of uh, Milwaukee, to the Native Americans who were here before them. Uh, we have Vel Phillips that represented, you know, human rights, as well as Father Grappi, and Santiago Calatrava, who was the designer for the Milwaukee Art Museum. So a lot of these key individuals really helped shape Wisconsin Avenue to what it is today, and I wanted to highlight those individuals along the boxes. The Crisol Corridor is a business improvement district in that area, in the neighborhood, and it's on 13th and Oklahoma. I think a lot of people are starting to understand that the impact of mural making it reaches a far greater audience than just putting up a billboard. Right now, it's, um, you know, it kind of depicts, you know, some of the residential houses as well as the home bridge and as well as like their logo, the logo, their branding logo. Painting that mural of Selena was very therapeutic for me. That day, we didn't have to necessarily ask anybody for permission in how to create the work or what we needed to create. We were just given permission to host the artwork on that building and you know we were free. We were truly creators. We didn't have a gallery to tell us what to paint. We didn't have a uh, city council or a board, uh, you know, group of board members to to tell us what to paint and stuff. So it was my, it was it was truly everything that I had my, inside myself. So as well as having it being a gift to the city of uh, the south side of Milwaukee as well as the rest of Milwaukee, but, you know, specifically predominantly, you know, Latino community. So the Cine Latino Film Festival reached out to me to initially design their poster, which I did. And, you know, we started to brainstorm on cooler ways in which we could create a, have a bigger impact for the poster and stuff. And the image that I submitted was um, a portrait of Frida Kahlo in an updated painting style that features her in a geometric painting approach. So, you know, picking Frida was very inspiring to me just because of this is my way to um, celebrate, you know, their heritage and their legacy.
And the reason why I called it, you know, Frida's watching is because, you know, I always looked at Frida as like a mother figure, someone very dominant, you know, very authoritative and just kind of going against the grain and stuff. Don't goof off, don't, don't disappoint her. <laughs> She's watching. Some of the artists that really influenced me to continue to create artwork in this style is, you know, one of them is, I have to go ahead and name him, Diego Rivera, who, you know, was an iconic mural painter, uh, as well as Keith Haring, just because of how cool he was. And basically, he was the first fine artist, street artist that I was introduced to. I think I was, it was like 93. You know, I find myself today in 2018, utilizing a lot of different tools to help create the artwork that I want to create and stuff. So I'm taking methods from aircraft painting, from automotive painting, and trying to mix them up into fine art. So that's why you see me with the tape uh, spray paint, you see me doing other types of finishes. The way that I price art um, really differs from different project to project. You know, like I said, the stakeholder and myself will kind of go through certain objectives that, you know, the artwork should accomplish. And, um, you know, those objectives differ and stuff. So it really comes down to um, what the artwork needs to serve. Mauricio vivió en tres diferentes ciudades, Chicago, Milwaukee y Albuquerque. Y según él, esto influenció en la forma de su arte. I can remember times living in Albuquerque where um, I would produce my own murals. And what I mean by that is, is basically fund the wall, fund the paints, uh, fund the materials to um, create work that meant something important to me. And right now on 6th and Copper in downtown Albuquerque, there's a mural that I painted a couple months ago of Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera in Union. Uh, a lot of times we see them separated as individuals, but you know, a lot of their uh, artwork really ties to the both of them and stuff. So I decided to present them in Union um, actually um, kissing each other, which is I thought was very romantic. Some of the advice that I have for people out there is that, you know, whatever they want to be, whether if it's a pizza delivery guy, whether if it's, you know, Bellman, whatever, whatever it is, try to be the best at it. You know, really enjoy it and fall in love with the work because then after that, all the success is going to come after that. You know, I really enjoyed painting and I never really knew where it was going to take me, but I knew I had this strong ambition trying to be really good at it. I'm a creator. I don't think I'll ever stop creating, whether if it's paint, whether if it's, you know, music, whether if it's a video, I'm always going to be creating and stuff. I think technology only tells what I'm going to be creating in a, in a couple of years and in the future.